what we're starting to see with these selections, right? You got Gates, no experience whatsoever, ill-equipped managerially to run a massive, massive bureaucracy. You had Dr. Oz yesterday, a guy who really actually supported Medicare for all before Kamala supported Medicare for all, but also ill-equipped to run a massive bureaucracy. Um, and you have all of these people, um, but we spoke yesterday, our show, on background uh, to uh, some people in the Biden administration at Justice who said, Todd Blanche, who will be the number two there, he said he'll be running the agency. We're, we're, Gates should not get through. We're not saying that at all. But if you look at justice, and I, I had some top Democratic lawyers over the last week saying Todd Blanche, you know, he's the real deal. Yeah. And so, so I'm just wondering if we're starting to see something here where mm. get a TV guy up front. Trump's a TV guy. It's worked for him politically. And I'm wondering if you, you're like, okay, we're going to get all of these people out front who bloviate, who fight hard, who do all of this stuff, and then at least at justice, you know, they're very concerned about a lot of things coming down the pike, but they say Todd Blanchell would run this, and whoever he picks to be the front person will probably be a mouthpiece. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just saying at justice right now, they're very concerned about a lot of things, but they like that the number two person there who will be running things actually, and these are Biden people, yeah. actually is a pro. So I think you're correct. I mean, Todd Blanche is a legitimate legal giant in his own right. And uh, running the Justice Department will probably be his chore, given whoever is going to be attorney general. Right. The most important thing to a lot of people isn't justice, though. And it happened yesterday. It's the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Your children's high school and grammar school education being run by someone who's more familiar with wrestling, with professional wrestling, than it is with actually what goes on in the classroom. People are concerned about what's being taught in the classrooms now. Yeah. That has occurred over the last couple of two or three years. Mm -hmm. You know, what are third, fourth, and fifth graders being taught in their elementary schools? What's the curriculum? Right. What's the high school curriculums? And look who is the Secretary of Education. Yeah. Well, I, I, and by I, I, the way, what about Dr. Phil? Is he going to get well, a spot? Well, and, and Willie and, and Lemire uh, reporting on this again. Um, what, what, what is even though the Washington Post today, it's like Casey's countdown of the four most horrifying selections thus far. And they actually rank them in order. And I think depending on where you are, um, you know, uh, it, it, you could move that list around. But I will tell you, for a lot of Republicans that are in the Senate and the House and who care about American national security, if you ask them, they will say it's DOD. If you talk to people, again, really conservative Republicans in the House, really conservative Republicans in the Senate, they will say it's Tulsi Gabbard. They're horrified by Tulsi Gabbard. If you talk to a lot of other people, they will say it's Matt Gates. And John, John has some great reporting on that in a second about talking to Republicans on the Hill yesterday. Uh, they will, you know, so it really is. There are four picks right now. Now, and of course, RFK, the New York Post keeps pounding RFK every day, saying how nutty that selection is. So I, it kind of depends on where you are uh, on, that, that will, you know, you know, have you decide which one of those three or four are most deeply disturbing. And we're going to talk to Edna a second, who says the whole thing is disturbing. Yeah, Tulsi Gabbard and Gates both slammed again today, interestingly, by the New York Post, which seems to be a, this is a Murdoch-led newspaper on a campaign against certain of these um, choices. But the question underlying all of this is, do, at the end of the day, these Republicans in Congress, in the Senate, do they have the guts to cross Donald Trump? They can say they don't like the guy. They can go out and give press conference that Matt Gates is no good and he's unqualified and he's a low character and the ethics report will show that uh, if it does come out publicly. But will they, at the end of the day, cross Donald Trump? I mean, you talk about the TV aspect, Dr. Right. Oz. Right. So he has put up, this is also a Senate co confirmed position, Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services Administrator. In his statement, Donald Trump led by saying, Dr. Oz has won nine daytime Emmys, that he's a good face for public health. 
So that seems to be the primary qualification. The, the problem is this is a bureaucratic job. This is an administrative job. It doesn't even have that much to do with being a doctor in this case. It has to do with running these massive bureaucracies. So it is, John, central casting. And getting back to your reporting about Matt Gates, the question remains. The senators have openly said they don't like him and don't think he should be attorney general. At the end of the day, Will they vote against Donald Trump? Right. First on the theme of TV, there's no doubt that's Pete Hegseth too. He's yeah. a friendly, he's a Fox News face, and that's what Trump likes. And he, they, there is a, there is a growing belief in the Biden administration and elsewhere in Washington that it's going to be those second and third in commands who actually run things, while they have the figurehead on television, you know, being the face of, of those uh, departments. And yes, and, and certainly the Linda McMahon pick, you know, flying under the radar because of the, the, the assortment of controversial selections here and power rankings of bad cabinet choices, but like. Remember, the Trump campaign promise, which he reiterated in his statement yesterday, is to eliminate the Department of Education yeah. entirely, yeah. Uh, which is a, obviously a significant thing. But yes, to Matt Gates, I was talking to a number of Republicans on the Hill yesterday, senators and aides, and they, there is real, real doubt that Gates can get through. There's growing momentum here that this is the one pick that Republicans are going to say no to. In fact, I am told by sources that some of the senators are even telling Trump, look, don't make us vote on this one because we're going to have to vote against you. Don't make us stand up against you because this one is simply not palatable. We can't and, do it. And these are the people that actually he has spoken to. These are the people. Mm -hmm. that he's, there, there's no way for it. Like in, in any other world, none of these four would get through. None of them. None of them would get close to getting through. And I'm talking about RFK, Tulsi Gabbard, uh, Hegseth. DOD. I, I really need to learn to pronounce it. Heg, Hegseth. Hegseth, yeah. Hegseth. Hegseth. <laughs> and, and then Matt Gates. In any other world, they would never get through. I will say... We're talking a lot about Matt Gates because that's what the Republican senators are talking about mainly. Mm. But man, I would find it, it all of it's deeply disturbing, these picks. Mm. But I cannot imagine four Republican senators turning over DNI to somebody who has apologized for Assad as regularly as she has and and who's who's just continually parroted yep. Kremlin talking points. I just, again, I just don't see four Republican senators doing that any more than I see them getting Matt Gates. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely concerns there. They're a little flying under the radar because Gates is taking up so much of the conversation exactly. right now. Exactly. And, it, and it does seem like Senate Republicans are willing to draw the line on Gates, but they have concerns about others, too. And, and, and the Trump transition team is on the Hegseth pick re-examining things because of the sexual assault uh, investigation of a few years ago. They do worry about that one can, as can, well. Can you help me on that for one second? And, and Mike, we'll, we'll get to uh, just one second. I will say uh, in, mm -hmm. uh, on background, in our conversation on background, there are a couple of things that surprised us. One of them was when his ca name came up, there was not a flinch, but a noticeable. Who's name? We've got problems here. Hexeth. Hexeth. That's the, yeah. That's that, and, and those weren't the words, but I will just tell you that was the takeaway because obviously everybody knows Gates is a problem, but I think. There must be more there, or I think they were just shocked. Maybe they were blindsided because there's been no vetting process for these four. There's been vetting processes for Rubio. I of think course, that's Susie, he didn't know about that. Yeah, Susie Wilds uh, was was obviously everybody was a, a bit relieved to see Susie Wilds in there. Even Ratcliffe, but then yeah. So we haven't really talked about Hegseth much. Yeah, I think there are con real concerns, and people reported about this on the inside about that. About that, so talk talk about that as well, because there's a lot of things going. Again, Gates is occupying center stage, quite frankly, because the charges mm -hmm. and the testimony from a 17-year-old junior, she's older now, but then, is so damning. That I think that's that's really taking all the heat right now. Yeah, and the hex I think briefly is is if some years ago uh, an allegation of a sexual assault, uh, no charges brought, but eventually he the reporting he did pay uh, this woman, uh, you know, afterwards as a non uh, sort of a non disclosure uh, agreement. Um, but there is the Trump transition officials were surprised by that pick in part because to Joe's point there hasn't been vetting because and this is another storyline that's not getting enough attention. They're not going through the typical FBI background check process. They're doing it on their own and they're missing things. What, what do you hear in talking to your sources in Washington 
at the edge of the intelligence community, do you hear the same thing that a lot of other people are hearing, that the British, the French, the Israelis are, co are coming in with hints that, you know, we're not going to share intelligence, our intelligence, with Tulsi Gabbard? Yes, current and former intelligence officers have expressed that fear and have heard that from their colleagues overseas yeah. saying there's going to be real reluctance to share some of their those nations top secrets and intel with the united states first of all there were already some concerns about trump who we know has revealed intel in inappropriate settings including to the to, to sergey lavrov in the <laughs> oval office yeah. but tulsi gabbard in particular someone who has voiced talking points that emanated from moscow has cozied up with syrians that there's real concern here that that the nation will be less safe because allies aren't going to trust us with their intel.